Hey guys, it is Holy Basil back with another voiceover, and man, I've got another leg day for y'all. I have got to find out a way to mix it up, and I know y'all are probably tired of watching my workouts while I blabber on. So the goal by the end of this bulk is still 405, 410 on these RDL, SDL, HDL, whatever you want to call them, um, however my form is, just, just trying to... Get big on these, man. Just trying to get big. And I think uh, 4 or 5 for 10. Um, I got 4 or 5 for 3 the other day. I think 10 is a long shot, but it's okay. If I don't get it, that's fine. Um, been still doing these ab crunches in between. Uh, it just really helps your lower back fatigue because, man, I'm telling you, you're going to be walking really funny after doing these. There's the tension in your lumbar is wild, and uh, this truly helps. But I think I'm weighing around 215 to 217, so it's gaining weight. I see some in my arms. I can feel it in my midsection. That's okay. It's just coming with it. Uh, but last week or a couple days ago, I got some good traction off my video on Calvinism. And um, today I want to talk about something a little less, I guess, divisive. Uh, that's the parable of the rich young ruler. Today I'll read from the book of Mark, uh, chapter 10, verse 17, but the parable of the rich young ruler is also in the book of Matthew and Luke, and starts off, as he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to in inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked him, no one is good, but one, God. You know the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your mother and father. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these from my youth. Then looking at him, Jesus loved him and said to him, You like one thing, go, sell all you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. But he was stunned at this demand, and he went away grieving, because he had many possessions. Now, there's a lot to unpack from this, and disclaimer, this is just my analysis of the text. But to start off, we have to address the rich young ruler himself, and that he is the one that approaches Jesus. And I think that we can all agree that the notion of eternal life is attractive to all, that nobody would say, if there is a hell, I would want to go there after I pass and be stuck there for eternity. I note the fact that the rich young ruler also questions Jesus, and some might think, oh, why would you question your God? But that is not a bad thing, especially if you have good intentions and you desire something good of Jesus. So I think that's something that we can apply to ourselves, and whenever we're going through something or if we have a question or if there's some dilemma, to implore of God. Uh, Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, call out unto me. And I will tell you great and mighty things of which you do not know. So he's not being sinful here. But the problem in his question is that this rich young ruler thinks that salvation is something that he can physically do. And where it's not. Because we know that salvation is a gift from God, Ephesians 2. And it only takes faith in, in Christ. So John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Then Jesus points out all of the laws, and the, the young guy says, man, I've been doing this my whole life. Well, and then Jesus says, well, then do this, and basically tells him to give up everything. You gotta be kidding me. But he doesn't realize that if he were to give up everything, that he would get so much more in return. And it's sad to me that after all of that and his interaction with Jesus, the rich young ruler leaves and it says he went away grieving because he had many possessions. He wasn't prepared to give it all up. I think we might have known his name it might have noted his name if he had given it all up to follow Jesus. If you were a fan of YouTube fitness, over the past 10 years, there's no doubt that you've heard of Rich Piana, and this parable reminds me greatly of him, and he is notoriously quoted for saying whatever it takes. 
Are you truly doing whatever it takes to reach your goals? Meaning that Rich Piano would do whatever it took for him to get bigger, even if that cost him his life. And it ultimately did because he would take a, as much gear as he possibly could, eat as much food as he possibly could. He took stimulants to have the energy to work out. The man worked out for eight hours. And everything to accomplish my goals. And I've probably tried every workout, every program there is known to man um, because I'm going to do whatever it takes. And uh, one of my deep, dark secrets, a lot of people have probably heard of this, but um, it's basically an eight hour arm workout. And it's made up of- On his arms. Now, whether it was that efficient, who knows, maybe, probably not. But he did whatever he could to get bigger. There's no argument against him being dedicated to his life goal. But the sad thing is how trivial it was and that cost him his life. As I think now, I wonder what I would do in the rich young ruler's shoes when he was interacting with Jesus. Would I just sit there and tell him all that I've done for him and walk away miserable if he asks me to give up everything that I have? And I hope I would, but I know that I too struggle, like the rich young ruler, uh, with covetousness. I think that's what you say, coveting, coveting. And what's beautiful to me here is that Jesus isn't hypocritical because though his life is not yet over in this scripture, he adheres to his own word because Jesus, one, was poor, two, didn't have many possessions, but gave up everything he could. But he did that so that we could know him. And that's the most selfless thing I've ever seen. It makes me think of Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So if you're listening to this and you know God and you have a relationship with him, then I encourage you to really analyze yourself and think about what you would do in that situation and that if there isn't anything that you would give up to follow Christ. And if you don't know Christ, then I encourage you that if you give everything up, it's nothing compared to what God has for you. And that's eternal life. Anyway, thanks for listening. Peace.